그러니까 이 우선서 박상우 선생님이 초만의 총팩을 통해서 만들려는 여러 가지 의도가 그냥 틀어막혔거든요. 네, 입구를 틀어막은 것처럼 와, 상대방의 빌드를 미리 알고 하는 것 같은 그런 느낌이 들 정도였죠. 아주 무난하게 뭐 이것을 막아내면서 상대방의 빌드에 맞춰서 일단 한번 막아낸 다음에 바로 공격. 수리와 공격의 이런 타이밍이 정말 환상적이었고 정면적이 조이질 때 멀티를 미리 해놓은 박상호 선수의 판단은 좋았습니다. 하지만 팔로를 볼 생각에는 이영호 선수의 대응, 경력 움직임이 환상적이었죠. 그렇습니다. 여기 s c 몇개 잡은 걸 제외하고는 그 이상의 것들을 해내기가 좀 어려웠습니다. 아, 이영호 선수의 오늘 플레이, 뭐 전반적인 태도전 플레이도 그런 경우가 많았습니다만 특히나 오늘 플레이는 마치 그 상대편을 뭐 봉인해버린 듯한 그런 느낌이었거든요. 박상호 선수가 차근차근 옆으로 그리고 세로로 자신의 세력을 넓혀갔음에도 불구하고 그 힘을 활용할 수 없게 만들어버렸습니다. 그 아예 그냥 호리병 안으로 가는 듯한 그런 느낌이었어요. 그렇죠. 정말 어, 어느 곳으로 가도 이영호 선수의 병력이 배치되어 있었고 털에 또 적절한 위치에 잘 건설되어 있었던 점 그런 점에서 박상호 선수가 결국은 공격이 아닌 수비 지향적으로 추가적인 확장을 가져가려 했는데 그것마저도 이영호 선수가 어, 드라쉽을 통해서 어, 방해를 한, 함으로써 결국은 뭐 멀티도 가져갈 수 없고 공격도 올수 없게 만들어버리는 정말 아무것도 할수 없게 만들어버린 모습이었어요. 그래서 결국 멀티를 어쩔 수 없이 하는 듯한 느낌으로 네. 좌측을 먹기 시작했군요, 박상호. 그렇죠. 항상 그 선택하는 것이 말씀하신 대로 최선책이 아닌 느낌이었습니다. 좀 가, 반강제적으로 예, 그렇게 상대방을 만드는 이용호 선수의 모습들이 여러 차례 나오면서 예, 정말 멀티가 조금 늦더라도 SCB가 멀티가 완성이 될 때마다 안전하게 보내는 쪽과 일곱시 한개한개 한개 생산해서 저렇게 만드는 쪽 이런 효율성을 따지게 되면 은 역시나 이용호 선수가 아주 좋은 상황이었었고 정면에 뚫기 위해서 결국 뚫어야 되는데 뚫기 위해서 자원 소모가 많이 되기 때문에 이용호 선수의 압도하는 경기를 봤습니다. 그렇습니다. 일곱시가 결국 뭐 이용호 선수가 그 부분까지 반복하게 할수 있었습니다. 박상우 선수 잡아내면서 3대1로 케이트 루스가 움직인 스타즈를 다시 한번 합성합니다. 자 이제 동점까지 만든 상황에서 이용에게 틀어막혔고 이제 여섯 번째 세트 웅진 스타즈의 기회 얼마나 남을 수 있을지 한번 보겠습니다. 케이트 루스와 웅진 스타즈 여섯 번째 선택은 바로 이 선수들입니다. 먼저 케이트 루스는 저입니다. 오늘 뭐 4점 문제나요? 최웅주입니다. 그렇습니다. 앞 경기의 고강민, 뭐 임정현, 김성재 선수까지는 예상할 수 있었지만 어, 최웅주 선수까지 예상하기 힘들었거든요. 하지만 뭐 이영호 선수가 포트리스에 나옴으로써 라만차라는 맵에 나올 카드가 사실은 확실한 카드가 없었고 김민철 선수로 어느 정도 예상한 상태에서 내보냈을 때 가장 변수를 만들 수 있는 카드가 최용주 선수라 생각한 것 같습니다. 과연 어떤 준비를 했을지 경기에서 한번 봐야 될것 같네요. KT 입장에서는 나름대로 최선의 선택을 할수 있는 선수가 나왔습니다. 최용주 선수고요. 왜냐하면 국제 선수 남은 선수가 바로 이 선수군요. 김민철. 네, 그래서 지금 KT 로스터에서는 이것을 노리고 나왔습니다. 허언이 김민철 선수가 나오는 느낌이 분명히 있었습니다. 하지만 그래도 김민철 선수가 프로레그에 대해서 굉장히 훌륭한 저부전을 지금까지 보여줘 왔고 또 이제는 이러한 무대에서 그렇게 긴장하지 않는 모습을 여러 차례 보여줬기 때문에 우리는 이번 경기만 잡게 되면 다음 경기 맵을 볼때 저부 출전 굉장히 좋은 맵이거든요. 아직 세계에서 또 김병원 선수 출전을 한번더 기대해 볼수 있는 기회를 마련해야 됩니다. 자 그러기 위해서 이 김민철을 총주가 어떤 기술을 잡아놨냐 아가내린다고 문제입니다. 사실상 이당체도 넘어갈 수 있는 환경 김민철과 최우의 지금까지 엄청 많은 All right, so I think we are back. If my mic is not still muted, no, I don't think it is. So it's going to be uh, set six of KT Rolster versus Wounded Stars. It's going to be Perfected coming up for KT Rolster, a uh, fairly new Zerg player against Solki of Wounded Stars, who is a semi-new but also very, very good uh, Zerg for Wounded. Not sure if Deja has made his way back. Oh, yes. Yes, I am. Sorry. I heard you talking through my mic, and I was like, oh, or my headset. I was like, oh, I should probably put them on. So here we go. It is going to be on, looks like La Mancha. We're going to have Perfective here in the top right in yellow, and then Sulky in the bottom right in green. And, you know, if, you got, if you're playing against Sulky, you want it to be a ZVZ. You don't want to send out a Terran, or I should say, you don't want to say, send out a Terran not named Flash. So if this, I actually thought that it might be Barracks coming out in this game which would have been a very nice um, game for Sulky, but instead we've got a ZVZ, which is a far more volatile matchup, 
and who knows, Perfective could absolutely win this game. It's It, it would not be um, out of the question at all to see him take down Solky, who's not a uh, fantastic zvz -er by any means, not terrible either, but um, certainly has not built any sort of a ZVZ -Z rep yet. So anything could happen in this game. We could see it close out for, for KT, or we could see this get pushed to an ace match. Both are um, very, very possible, I think. I don't mean to correct you or anything here, but I actually believe, believe that uh, ZVT is Sulky's weak matchup, and he's about 65% ZVZ, so uh, I actually think that Sulky has a massive advantage here. Obviously, uh, the volatile matchup, like you said, of ZVZ, anything could happen. Like we saw in Zero versus Action, there could be a massive advantage from the build orders. Um, and Barracks, though, wouldn't have been a very good choice either, because uh, Barracks is... 4-4 four and four against Zergs, and the four Zergs that he has beaten are all below 40% in Zerg versus Terran, so he hasn't really proven to be very good against uh, Zergs either. So really, uh, pick your poison here. It's either Perfective or Barracks, neither of them having a huge a huge chance of taking down Sulky. Uh, so they've gone with Perfective, who obviously has the advantage of it being ZBZ, and really anything could happen. I think it's going to be a... Was that an overpool from... Uh, Sulky? Yeah, I believe it was. Mr. Mr. Stats over there. Stats over here. Pra, freezer jumps, calling out everything. I, I still think that Sulky's ZVT is still probably, or at least I should say his versus mech ZVT is still probably one of the best that we've seen, and that's where a lot of his ZVT prowess comes from. Uh, Mr. Stats, freezer jump, always knows. You always know. I'm always impressed by you. You don't even look all this stuff up. Like, I swear, I swear, like, I'm just, talk like, in conversation with you, and we're not watching games, and we're not casting or anything, just talking to you, like, you know the percentages of these players off the top of your head. I'm always so impressed as to how you know that. I don't know how you do it. I'm, whatever. I'm impressed. Well, I really only know some of them. Like, some of them, I, it, it just, I, I knew that Sulky had one bad matchup, and I didn't think it was ZVZ. Um... So I just checked that just to just to make sure that I could call you wrong if you were ever wrong because you're so rarely wrong. Um, no huge lane advantage is going to be coming from Silky actually. Uh, he went for kind of a late pool um, just to be safe uh, against obviously the weaker player in Perfective. Uh, so Perfective gets away with his 12 hatch, and Silky still hasn't actually scouted him. They both scouted in the wrong direction. Silky just running Zerglings around now, and by the time he gets to Perfective's base. Perfective is going to have just as many, if not more, Zerglings out uh, despite his later pool. So Perfective off to a really great uh, early lead here. Yeah, absolutely. That is a that uh, this game could not have started out any better, really, for for Perfective in this game. He's got two hatches down, and he's not going to be very very far behind on his tech or anything. He's not going to have to like go spore colonies or anything like that. He's going to have the production advantage, and so everything is pointing in his direction right now. We've got even a, um, a creep colony coming up right now for uh, Sulky as well, knowing that his pool, or I'm sorry, his second hatchery was much later, or significantly later at least, than, than Perfective. He knows that it's possible that he could end up being as many as eight or ten links, something like that, um, behind, so he's going to need that second colony to even up those odds should Perfective go for some sort of attack, although it doesn't really look like Perfective is gearing up for it yet. We do see the Spires going down for both players, and I think Perfective is going to mass up Lings now, and then try and possibly go for some sort of Ling break, and we did see him just do a pretty cool scatter. They were all just sitting there. I wish that we, we had like had a picture on that on the Zerglings as they were literally just sitting there doing nothing because that scatter actually looked really cool from Perfective. And the speed with which he sent his Zerglings everywhere looking for possibly um, a hiding four or six Zerglings which is a very popular strategy that Sir, that Solky could have hit as the three or the uh, the 12 o'clock position. He was, that's exactly what he's looking for. He saw that they weren't there so now he's going to put on a little bit of contain, wait for more lings and um, try and make a decision. Does he want to wait till Mutas? Does he want to try and force an issue despite that sunken colony? And that's sort of the decision we're going to have to see next from um, Perfective. Yeah, uh, the other thing to note is that Perfective is mining his second gas and I don't think Sulky is. So the later this goes, I think uh, Perfective is also going to have the advantage in uh, the air battle so really, everything going wrong for Sulky. So obviously, KT made the correct decision sending him here. 